Does it not mean anything to you that I'm actually making a video right now? I see you looking over there. Who's that? Who's that right there? Who's that? What? I know what you want. I can't go out right now. I'm making a video. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Cameo by Beauregard. Oh, he's back. <laughs> he's a ham. He's an upstaging him. You're upstaging me. Ow. Ow. Never work with kids and dogs. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Today is Wednesday. It is the 16th, 16th day of March 2022. I am Scott. Obviously, that is Beauregard. And it is a nice day down here in Tampa, Florida. I got to go to the doctor in very soon. So I'm going to try to rush through this. I'm going to do something interesting for you guys. <laughs> a new twist on my fucking uh, presentation. This this would be an interesting video. I am going to make a comparison. I'm going to connect the Colin Kaepernick story to Ukraine. How can you do that, Scott? It's impossible. It's 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 unbelievable. You'll lose all credibility, Scott. I don't think so. <laughs> I, I'm not going to take the time to explain Colin Kaepernick shit to you. He's out there playing. He's showing. He's making videos. He's paying to make videos, showing he's still in good shape. He can still throw a football, uh, and he wants a job in the NFL. And I think there's an argument to be made. Uh, that he certainly should be uh, working for the NFL. You have Josh Jackson or Josh Johnson who came in, <laughs> I think, for, for the Reds of Washington. Um, he, Josh Johnson never took a team to the fucking Super Bowl. And when I say took a team, he, he wasn't like, you know, Nick Foles, who was a backup, and Carson Wentz. Took him to the fucking Super Bowl, and then Carson Wentz got hurt, so Nick Foles ends up playing very well and wins. No, he actually took them to the Super Bowl. So, uh, wait a minute. Hang on. I can't have any credibility without my alien. So, but he took a knee. I was a I was a Super Bowl contender and, a, and an MVP contender, but then I took an arrow to the knee. He took a knee. And he and another guy, Eric something, uh, they started this thing and it became offensive to certain people. And so now he's blacklisted and has been blacklisted for the past five years and will probably never play a down in the NFL again. I'm not saying that certainly, but I'm saying probably. Why? And how does this correlate to Ukraine? The situation with Colin here, uh, they weren't, he wasn't supposed to take a knee. They had to stand up to show patriotism, but he was taking a knee because in his mind and in the minds of many of us out there, um, African Americans are treated horribly. A lot of people are treated horribly by the police, um, and he was trying to simply call attention to the fact that yes, in fact, in fact, that's a thing in the United States, the land of the free and the home of the brave, the big PX, the shining city on the hill, and he was trying to to draw attention to the fact that attention should be paid uh, to what's going on out in the streets in the United States of America. Um, that was a bridge too far for a lot of people. And they hopped up and down and screamed he didn't. He hated the troops somehow and he, he wasn't. He hated America. <laughs> and that's not what it was about. So it became a big thing. Then, of course, Black Lives Matter came along. And what happened was this. The people, and I know because I'm down here in Tampa, Florida, and I do enjoy hanging out sometimes at bars and watching football games. And I'll tell you right now, I have since I was young. 
I'll tell you right now, um, attendance was down, way down in Tampa and down across the fucking board. Why? These are people, and you say, oh, it's racism. No. <coughs> These are people, working class people, working class stiffs, blue collar, middle class, hanging out in places uh, with their locals, uh, watching games, places they're familiar with, which are populated uh, by a number of different races. Uh, they work in places alongside people of other races. These are not racist people. What they didn't like was having shit stuffed down their fucking throats. That's what they didn't like. They went and hung out and spent the money. They worked hard. And on the weekends, they said to their wives and their kids, okay, I'm gone for about a couple hours to go watch this game. And they went and watched the game. And that was an escape for them. But now, all of a sudden, the escape, they were creeping in these fucking messages. Creeping in this programming. I don't want your fucking programming. I don't pay for your fucking programming. I don't come here for your fucking programming. Keep your programming to your goddamn self. Let me just watch my fucking football team lose every fucking season and I'll be fucking happy. And I can have a few drinks and I can have some laughs with my buddies. Some are white and some are black. And then I can fucking go home. Back to my life. And the drudgery of my life. Day in and day out. Until I fucking fall over dead. No! You gotta have some fucking programming to get you to think right during the game. And they said, fuck you, click, and turned it off. Colin Kaepernick will not play another game in the NFL. Why? Uh, because it's been five years and he can't play anymore? No. Because he was never that good, he took a team to a Super Bowl? No. Because he's a bad influence in the locker room? Bullshit! No. Certainly not now, where he allowed back into a fucking locker room. No, all of that's bullshit. The reason Colin Kaepernick can't play again is because he became, even though he wasn't the only one, he became... A symbol or something that the masses out here rejected it isn't racism it isn't black lives matter it's shoving shit down your fucking throat when you don't want it and so if somebody brings him back they stand the chance that that team in that city and certainly, the entire NFL, really, fan base, say, oh, fuck, here we go again. Click. Yeah, they'll put a little sticker on the back of their helmet. Yeah, they'll put a little message behind the fucking end zone. But they ain't going to have it in your goddamn face anymore. And bringing him back would do that. Unfortunately for Colin, which I think he could easily be a starting quarterback, maybe in the NFL, certainly a backup and a valuable one. But they can't bring him back. For that reason. It's got nothing to do with ending racism. It's got nothing to do with black lives mattering or not mattering. It's got nothing to do with any of that. It's got everything to do with we don't want that fucking trend continuing in the NFL because these people aren't here for your fucking messaging. Ukraine. You used to arrest people for doing stuff like this. If they thought you were uh, colluding with a Russian agent, if they thought you were putting out information or taking information and handing over to Russia, they used to actually investigate stuff like this. And I guess now, you know, there seems to be no bars. And people are not being told to hate Putin. Really? 
Putin doesn't need a reason to be hated. Of course, everyone should hate him. People aren't being told to hate him. But of course, you don't need a reason to hate him because he's the most hateable person on the planet. It's pretty much clear. Ah! He's started a war. He's started a war. Okay. <laughs> this, of course, is the view. And they are calling for uh, another Gestapo. Basically. They should arrest people. Like Tulsi Gabbard, like Tucker Carlson, like me, for instance. They should arrest us for questioning what could end up leading us into World War III and the validity of the reports that we're getting from Ukraine. You should be arrested for that. They used to call that act journalism. The whole point of journalism was to keep powerful interests in check by questioning their assumptions and their stories and their narratives. And when they didn't make sense, calling them out. That didn't mean you were in league with Putin or Hitler or the Huns. If you don't know that reference, it's what they called the... Uh, the invading forces in, uh, in World War I and that was the uh, Creel Commission back when propaganda was just getting started here they are telling you that you're treasonous and your brother's a treason a, a, a traitor and your friend down the street's a traitor and your co-worker's a traitor if they say anything different about what's happening in Ukraine television shoving that shit down your fucking throat there's an interesting um here's here's an example here's an example right here this woman right here simply said it looked like u.s provoked russia into a war with ukraine obviously that happened obviously they started shipping a bunch of fucking and this is all mainstream media stuff they shipped all these fucking weapons into ukraine starting in mid early december out of nowhere Give you more weapons and more weapons and more weapons. <laughs> Somehow or another, Alex Jones, with his intel asset, he's being an intel asset that he is, he was saying in October that Russia's going to invade Ukraine in mid-February. Biden let it slip in beginning of January that Russia was going to invade Ukraine in mid-February invade <laughs> um so what he did was uh, about february 14th 13th in that area we got Zelensky to unleash his military to start bombing the donbass region the breakaway republics and donetsk and Lugansk, and that triggered a response from russia the first response was to accept the fact that they, they internationally said, we accept that these are two independent states because they had requested it. Then they requested assistance to keep from being killed. Yesterday's video included video of the kinds of shit that they were doing. Uh, this one was one that just happened recently when they bombed uh, Donetsk, the city of Donetsk, in the middle of the fucking uh, civilian population <laughs> and the horror that, that created. This is what's going on all on the fucking line between the breakaway republics and the rest of Ukraine. So, of course, they responded. And when they responded, we called it an invasion. So they did, in fact, we did, in fact, provoke it. We needed it because we wanted to remove Putin and other things. But for the most part, we want to remove Putin. They couldn't fucking stand the fact that she said that. No, 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 no. And they kept hounding her, saying, no, no, Russia provoked it. Russia did it. <laughs> they can't stand the idea that some truth comes out. And so they, again, programming the public. Uh, this is interesting. I just tossed this in there. What are the odds of four people all having children working for Ukrainian gas companies? Mitt Romney who was screeching about people being treasonous, 
John Kerry, of course, Nancy Pelosi, and obviously Joe Biden. This is something that um, I really wanted to share with you on this. Uh, something that you really need to have a look at. This is from, I have no idea what stop world control is. However, <coughs> I have looked in many of the, looked into many of these uh, little memes that they produce here for you. Um, and they are all accurate. Um, I, I, the ones that I've seen. Um, and they're telling you something interesting. The media is lying to you. We know that. We remember the story of this guy. Uh, Udu Ulkot, Ufkot, Udu Ufkot. Again, if I'm mispronouncing it, my fault. Uh, he was for 25 years an editor for a uh, Frankfurter paper in Germany, Zeitung, the Frankfurter something Zeitung. Uh, and for 25 years, he worked for them, and then after he retired. He decided to come out and blow the whistle. This was five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. This was a while ago. Um, and it made news splash for a few minutes and then shh, gone. He said, I've been a journalist for 25 years. I was taught to lie, betray, to never tell the truth to the public. I was paid by the CIA, secret societies, and American billionaires. Journalists are used to manipulate the people. That's Udu. Ufkot? Was that his name? Ufkot. My fault. Udu Ufkot. So, they start with that. This is the whole point of the media now. This is why people like uh, these things uh, can't understand. They have no concept of what journalism is. They have no concept. To them, it's just they get paid by whomever to sell whatever fucking line. And so the way they justify it, the way they feel better about it, is they have to fully believe it. And if they tell them something today and they're all in on it and they're believing it 100%, tomorrow they can come back and tell them something 180 degrees in the opposite fucking direction of the same goddamn topic and they will believe it wholeheartedly and go out there and say something completely contradictory to what they said yesterday. Because that's the only way they can live with themselves. That's the only way they can live with themselves. You starting to see where I'm going with this? Here we go. Here's a good example. An explosion from China in 2015 is published as if it's Ukraine right now. An image from a 2010 movie published as if it was taken in Ukraine. A movie! Bombing in Ukraine, and this is the fucking film. A still from the film. It's the same fucking image. Another scene taken from a movie is used on a report as to what's happening in Ukraine. I've seen that one out there. Here's another scene. Picture from a gas explosion in 2018 is used to show the destruction caused in Ukraine by Russia. It's pure theater. This is the gas explosion. Video short in which crisis actors received to, to uh, use to, um, to to fool the public. 2015 16 uh, photo is used to stir up emotions, while it has nothing to do with what happened in Ukraine. These images will stick with us in a long time. That's a film. It's a photo. 2017 video of an explosion. As if it just happened in Ukraine. These are horrible, horrible things. How many people have you seen talking about the horrible things that they've seen in fucking Ukraine? I saw some horrible shit. I posted it yesterday. It was done by the Ukrainian military to people, civilians living in Donetsk. This was funny. I also covered this one. Uh, TIE fighter. A TIE fighter 
from a fucking promo for a Star Wars flick. Uh, was shown in his, on Israeli television as if this is some carnage taking place in Ukraine. Here it is. Uh, this is also an image from uh, someone suffering in Syria, a child from Syria being shown as something evil Putin did to somebody in Russia, in, in, in Ukraine. Uh, of course, RT was showing people that the Russians were actually bringing in trucks and trucks and trucks, convoys of food into Ukraine to help feed people uh, and provide basic necessities. So what did they do? Uh, they banned RT. You can't have access to it. You can't have access to this video. Why? It's Russian programming. This, of course, you'll never see. And that is these children being taught uh, actual racist shit. To be racist. Standing next to fucking skinheads, neo-Nazis, and real Nazis. White supremacists. Notice the color. Notice the color. Notice the color. Notice the color. Teaching little white boys and girls their hate. And here goes Whoopi. No matter what else. You gotta stand with Ukraine. Or you're a fucking traitor. Stand with this. Stand with this, Whoopi. Stand with that, Whoopi. Stand with that, Whoopi. Stand with that, Whoopi. Whoopi, why don't you stand with that? Whoopi, here, stand with that. This, there you go, Whoopi. Stand with that. Teaching a little white kid to be a fucking racist and to hate who? You. There's a documentary here about that. They can take a look at it. And of course, bombing their own people. His witnesses, more witnesses. I shared with that with you yesterday. Here's my point. My point is very simple. Uh, people reject, are rejecting uh, categorically the efforts of these smartest peoples in the room uh, to program us. We are rejecting it. The Bullshit from Whoopi. You can go around and look at the comments in her fucking, uh, on this. No, it's not just Whoopi, but it's the rest of the people on The View. <laughs> you can go and watch the comments and read the comments. Uh, it wasn't well received. It certainly wasn't as well received as she would like. She had to take two weeks off uh, a couple weeks ago for saying the fucking Holocaust wasn't about race. Tried to slip that one in. See if they could run that at the flagpole if anyone would salute to that. The Nazification of America, boys and girls. <laughs> People are rejecting and have been rejecting this forced programming from these fucking institutions. NBC, NBC, ABC, Fox. Don't think Fox is any different. One of the things I showed you was Fox, this one. Don't think Fox is any different. <laughs> All of these fucking institutions, their job is to fucking lie to you, and people are fucking sick of it. That's why their numbers are going down, and people like Jimmy Dore and all these other alt people, they're going up. And Joe Rogan, going up, 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 up. We are rejecting that. We are rejecting their fucking incessant lies. Yes, you got to work hard. You got to fucking dig around and find that picture. You got to do a, an image search on Google, but you can find them. And people are doing it. And we're sick of it. We're sick of it. We're absolutely sick of it. Which brings us back to Colin Kaepernick. Colin didn't do this because that's what they wanted him to do. He did it in opposition to what they wanted at the NFL because the NFL, they knew they were in trouble. However, once it took off 
once it became a thing, then they promoted it. Then they promoted the hell out of it because, of course, it was useful to their fucking ambitions. And they're all billionaires who own these fucking things, so they're all invested in all these other fucking entities. All 31 of them. <coughs> Green Bay is owned by the people, by the way. Not a billionaire. Then, of course, the Black Lives Matter thing came, and, of course, they all had to take knees when they played the... And the uh, it, it, it just became such a big fucking thing. It isn't anymore. Why? Because people tick, turned it off. They rejected it. Just like many of them are rejecting all this fucking shit about standing with Ukraine, stand with the fucking Nazis. Why don't you? But they keep trying to push it as hard as they fucking can. And they get insipid, mindless dolts like these people on fucking The View to do their work for them. And as they pay them more and more and as they kiss their asses more and more and they got nice green rooms and they treat them like fucking kings and queens when they come to work every fucking day, it doesn't matter because their numbers are dropping. Not increasing, dropping. And their credibility is going out the fucking window. We're tired of it. I do not mean to suggest that this person is anything like this person. This person took a stand by taking a knee for something he personally believed in. This person is just a sellout piece of shit who would sell any sham wow product as long as they paid her enough. Big, big, big difference. Unfortunately, this is the kind of activism that makes you a multi, multi, multi millionaire and keeps you on fucking television. And this is the kind of activism that gets you hiring some dude with a fucking Apple, with an iPhone, trying to film your fucking workouts, hoping to God to get back into the good graces of the capitalist billionaire class of America you're not going to Colin you're not going to <laughs> that's just the way that is I wanted to share that with you so you can see this stop whatever this fucking group is here these guys stop world control again don't know anything else about them but they did put together a good collection here and it's important to understand what this guy was saying. By the way, uh, they killed him weeks after he fucking said that. Month? Weeks. They had to kill him. He had to fucking go. Been a journalist for 25 years who was taught to lie, betray, never tell the truth to the public. I was paid by the CIA, secret societies, and American billionaires. Journalists are used to manipulate the people. We knew that. But his was confirmation from somebody from the inside. It's programming, boys and girls, and it is being rejected out of hand. We're done with it. We're sick of it. For some people, it doesn't take long for them to see it. For others, it takes a little while. But in the end, in the end, we all have clear eyes. We can all fucking see it. And we get sick of it. Anyway, I thank you for your time. Have a good Wednesday. <laughs>